Are you on the RCR mailing list? Never miss a beat of the news and hard-hitting stories you've come to know and love. Stay in the loop. Visit realitycheck.radio forward slash email. Now it's time for Cam's Buddies. This week we'll find out what they think about the carry-on in the Olympics opening ceremony. Was it an affront to Christians, just a bit of woke art, or something else? My producer has them all lined up and ready to go. Let's go now to Cam's Buddies. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Miles. Good to have you back. Hello, Cam. How are you today? Fantastic. And we're back in the afternoon. Uh, you know, normal service resumes. <laughs> Sounds fantastic, except I just wish the uh, French could have had some um, bouquets, but I think they just got brickbats. Well, that is exactly what I was going to talk to you about. What did you think about the official opening? Do you think it was sacrilegious or uh, demonic or all the other epithets, or is it just a bit of um, cheerful nonsense that we all should just ignore? Oh, Look, firstly, I thought it was strictly amateurish. When I looked at it, I thought, good Lord, this is all they could come up with. And it, it seemed like amateur hour, you know, at the local theatre. And I thought, my first thought was, it's strictly amateur. And it didn't look like it had had any thought applied. And when I was looking at the subject matter, I began to get more and more grumpy and to the point of being angry and wondering what exactly all this palaver and all this these skits had to do with France. I, I just was gobsmacked. And yes, frankly speaking, it was blasphemous, over the top and outrageous. And it was looked like some school kid had done it on an amateur budget, to be honest. Well, there's some talk that um, it wasn't the Last Supper that they were mocking that it was uh, Bellini's painting of the Feast of the Gods and Dionysus, celebrating Dionysus. But if you have a look at Bellini's The Feast of the Gods painting, it bears no resemblance at all to what they were portraying with a haloed figure in the middle. But it looked incredibly like uh, uh, Da Vinci's Last Supper painting, which I've always worried, wondered about. Didn't they use both sides of the table back in those days? But anyway, that's, that's, that's another aside. <laughs> Let's be honest, Cam. You and I both know that explaining is losing. Yeah. And the fact is that they made a, a absolute botch up. If it was innocent, which I don't, I don't think it was. I think it's deliberate. If it was innocent, my goodness, what a stuff up. But I think it was a planned take off and I think it was in very, very poor taste. I mean, look, we're talking about France. This has got some skiing in the Alps, wine, cheese. I mean, you know, they could have done something representative of France, real France, but instead they chose less than one percent of the population and they highlighted that and frankly speaking it was distasteful if you could put a word on it, and blasphemous at the worst. I mean, they could have had, you know, some French army soldiers marching backwards like they always do, you know, or something <laughs> similar. To that, you know? or, or, uh, maybe, or maybe you know, hearkening, so hearkening back to the reason why the Champs-Élysées has trees down it so German soldiers can march in the shade. Look, you're right, and I'm, I, I mean, obviously you're taking it the mickey, and it's fair enough. The, the French deserve it for that atrocious yeah. opening ceremony. And it was just amateur hour. And I thought to myself, how does that opening ceremony represent France? And the answer I have to say is, I believe it didn't. And, and if, and in least, fact, anyone thought it represented France, they're sadly mistaken. At least, they, at least it, they're representing that France is a hedonistic society that's populated by weirdos. <laughs> Let's not go down that uh, route, I think. <laughs> I think that France has more than enough um, offerings to the world culture for a opening ceremony to be 
I don't know, I guess uh, entertaining and um, informative and showing people about the French way of life and the French mindset. And I can't see why they didn't do that. Oh, yes, I can. I can see why they didn't do it. It was because some idiot got in his mind that he should be able to represent less than 1% of the population. And in doing so, he managed to absolutely enrage almost all the population. They would never have um, mocked, uh, you know, a a scene uh, from the Quran, would they? They would never have mocked Islam in in the opening ceremony of of the Olympics in Paris. Uh, But they seem... Uh, not at all. To mock Christians because they know there's not going to be, you know, mass burnings in the street or um, bombs going off or terror acts of terrorism for being mocked. Christians go, oh, well, you want to do that? It's up to you. But um, radical Islam well, I, I, exception to any sort of criticism. Well, I think that the um, Christians and, and Western um, nations in general are having a bit of a say, and I think it's telling that... Um, the um, YouTube videos and um, so forth of the opening ceremony have been cancelled. And I think, you know, what on earth were they thinking is, is just a minor question. And who on earth was in charge is it? And frankly speaking, you know, the head of the French Olympic Committee who who signed off on this, they need to go. And... Um, all you have to do is put a pre- bit of pressure on the French, and they put their hands up. You know, they're not—they're not known as the cheese-eating surrender monkeys for nothing. <laughs> and speaking of cheese, couldn't they have done something with cheese? I mean, cheese champagne uh, uh, has given us so many great cheeses. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, if they're going to mock Christians, they could have done cheeses Christ. <laughs> Good Lord, I, I don't think we want to go down that um, particular road. But, you know, cheese, wine, skiing, uh, you know, there's so many other things that French uh, have given us. Um, and why haven't they and why didn't they? These are questions that have bugged me. And I can only think they did this by design. And I can think that the, that someone somewhere thought it would be a smart idea. And the reality is, I think it has really put a sour taste on the whole Olympics. I mean, they could have celebrated the French Foreign Legion. You know, those guys actually do win things. But that's because they're foreigners, not French. (laughs) Look, yeah, I think the French have got a hell of a lot to offer the world. And I think that it was um, embarrassing to most French people, and I think, as the French bishops said, it was blasphemous. And the reality is that there's a lot of um, French people who are, you know, in the majority who find this sort of stuff very distasteful, and I think that the Olympic Committee has really fallen flat on their face. The French Olympic Committee, that is. Yeah, I think you're, I think you're right, and... Uh... Even though some of our, our listeners think it's terrible that we all agree on on the Cam's Buddy segment, um, I think on this occasion we're absolutely right on this. This was an insult. and uh, But, of course, they'll get away with it because the French will just shrug, Christians will just shrug, and the world will go on with its utterly crazy adherence to this nutty religion of, you know, weirdness. Thanks for your call, Miles. I'll talk to you next week. Okay, look after yourself. We'll catch you back. Okay, see you. Bye. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Lindley. Good to have you back. Hi, Cam. How's things? Oh, fantastic, as usual. We're in, back in our normal time slot, so, you know, it's the uh, – you know, I think I really find getting up early to to do things is, uh, is not my bag. I'm definitely an afternoon person. <laughs> Right, well, we won't do that again then, will we? <laughs> Hopefully not. But, you know, we, we all got to muck it sometimes when needs must. Now, the topic this week yes. is is the Olympics opening ceremony and their mockery of the Last Supper. I don't know if you saw it. Uh, I didn't, but I've seen the outrage all across uh, X and uh, Facebook. So I'm interested in your thoughts if you managed to see it and what you thought about it. 
Um, and did I manage to see it? Not live, no, because um, after learning of the sabotage of the trains, the uproar over the leading dressage competitor who's disqualified, and um, the two XY chromosome boxes in the XX, that's women's competition. I never watched the opening because of all that. I just thought the Olympics have become such a joke. I'm suddenly not interested in them. <laughs> so I didn't watch I didn't watch the opening, um, but I did catch up with a few um, sort of still images of it because most of them they've taken down now, and I wondered what all the uproar was about. Um, but what I saw, Cam, was a pathetic piece in the opening ceremony of the once honourable Olympic Games. What has happened? Well, what has happened indeed. It just seems, uh, you know, a celebration of degeneracy, weirdness, uh, woke um, nonsense. That's what it looked like to me. Well, no, I thought it was a classic attempt to publicise and normalise DEI uh, and gender bending. Everyone's now talking about it, which is exactly what this aberrated community wants. They want publicity and they want to normalise it. And in that way, they are succeeding because we can't get away from it, can we? Well, we can't get away with it. Well, there's a bit of pushback in the UK. Um, they've you know, stopped now supplying... Um, these drugs, uh, and the court has upheld the decision. So, you know, we're starting to see some bush pushback, but, you know, it's 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 insane. As Miles said earlier, you know, there's many other things to celebrate about uh, French culture. Um, why didn't they, you know, celebrate, f you know, food and wine and baguettes and cheese and champagne and all that? It's all been overshadowed by this mockery of the Last Supper. It has, and of course, it's the home of um, some incredibly famous artists. They, you know, so you can hardly mention this um, ceremony as art in, in uh, that context, really. And oh. what I saw in the um, aftermath in the media was a group of truly hideous human bodies in grotesque poses depicting a form of art in France. I mean, there's just so many famous artists that have come from there. Mm. That's why I thought it was just a joke. I can't see why anyone would be offended because it was uh, such a pathetic depiction. It it wasn't good enough to to make me offended. Right. Yeah. But do you think they um, were a bit too chicken to offend Islam? Absolutely. They they'd have been <laughs> shot. You know, that would have been the end of them, yeah. wouldn't it? Oh, absolutely. But it's all about it's it's all about the, this DEI move, and, and um, I don't know if you uh, saw the comment from the artistic director himself um, on this uh, insult upon our eyes. He defended his artwork, saying <clears throat> we wanted to include everyone. We have lots of rights in France, and this is what I wanted to convey. So it is about. Um, gender bending and DEI. It's not about all those other things about Greek gods and everything that, that people are bringing up. But um, the Last Supper painting by Leonardo da Vinci, of course, is, it's a truly fabulous and clever mural that takes up about five by eight metres um, of an entire end wall <clears throat> in the refectory of a convent. And I don't know whether you've looked at it, um, even online, but in true 3D, it's a marvellous painting. It appears to take you into another room beyond the painting itself, right. thus so, melting into the architecture, really. And it took three years in the 1400s to paint. Um, and what I would say is da Vinci would not be in ecstasy over this. He'd be in agony. Yeah, and God cool. rest his brilliant soul compared to this chap. And the artistic director of this parody on perfection should copy another famous artist, don't you think, uh, Vincent van Gogh? Chop his yeah. ear off and go into a mental asylum and never be seen again, and then I'd be happy. <laughs> I could always rely on you for a soundbite, Lindley. I'm sure that's going to end up on the socials. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, I'm sure you'd agree. Oh, yeah, look... 
it, there's so many things that they could have celebrated about France. Uh, you know, there's there's just, you know, I mean, they could have celebrated, you know, Vercingetorix standing up to Julius Caesar at Alesia, for example, a famous battle that was a close run thing. Uh, but but you know, instead they've got you know the pale horse riding with death on it. Um, you've got this nonsense of the Last Supper, uh, and and that's what everybody's talking about. No one's talking about how great France is. I mean, you know, it's, they're a laughing stock. No, well, my worry is it's no longer great um, because you know when you speak of Paris, uh, Paris. Well, in the in the past, when people have spoken of Paris. It sort of um, lifts your imagination to another level. You know, we think of it as all forms of art, history, beautiful things. Well, there's, um, there's great architecture. There's, you know, Montmartre. Mm. There's, uh, you know, the the, um, the the Cathedral of Notre Dame. It, just amazing buildings. You've got all of the artwork that's in the Louvre. You've got uh, just mm. fantastic cultural heritage. I mean... Why why depict the Last Supper in such a craven, uh, demonic, um, you know, sacrilegious way? Well, I've no idea except what the director said. So, I mean, he said um, that he, he raved on about the different human rights that they had in France. You know, they had human rights to um, have whatever sexual denomination they want, um, and all that sort of thing. He, he reeled off actually quite a few things that he thought were good about human rights, and I just thought were aberrations of human rights. But anyway, he was happy with that, and he said that's what he wanted to depict. He he has never never said, to my knowledge, that he wanted to actually create a parody on the Last Supper, but it looks like it is to me. It looks like it to me. It, it totally looks like it. Yes. People have talked about that. Maybe he's copying um, Bellini's painting, you know, the uh, the Feast of the Gods, or, or perhaps uh, Jean van Belleur's painting, um, again, uh, the Feast of the Olympian Gods, which is a mockery in itself of the Last Supper with a mm. Christ figure in the middle. But it doesn't look anything mm. like either of those things. It looks like... No, um, and... Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper. Yes, and um, people who've seen it um, say the same thing. It, I just think it's an absolutely horrific um, uh, copy or take on The Last Supper. But to be fair, there have been um, a lot of artists who have done takes on The Last Supper um, over the years. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not the first time that it's been it's been bastardised. It's not the first time. No, and it won't be the last time. All right, that's all we've got mm. time for today, Lindley. So thank you for calling Cam's buddies, and we'll talk again next week. Jolly good. See you later. Bye bye. Welcome to Cam's buddies, Marcus. Long time no here. No, hey buddy, how you doing? Good. You've been off um, sailing an awful lot, haven't you? Yeah, mate. Oh well, you know you make. Make hay where the sun shines, so to speak, and um, we've been doing just that with our sailboat. So we've been gallivanting around New Zealand quite a bit. It's been great, absolutely fantastic country we live in. Beautiful spot. Yeah, and the, the weather isn't that bad, you know, for the middle of winter either. You know, it was um, pretty warm. No, uh, no, we we just took off for a week over to Great Barrier just uh, a couple of weeks ago as well for a midwinter um, getaway. I, I must admit, I didn't go swimming, but it was pretty cool. Right. Well, you haven't been on Cam's Buddies for a while, mate, so I've got a, a curly one for you. Um, did you watch the opening ceremony of the Olympics? And if you did or didn't, but have subsequently seen later, what are your thoughts on this depiction of the Last Supper? <laughs> yeah, I didn't watch it, um, but I have seen all the rigmarole about it and um, since since then looked into it a little bit and everyone's going on that it's not the Last Supper. It was... Uh, Dionysus or something, the Greek god of debauchery or whatever. Regardless of all that fact, there's there's zero zero interpretation needed from the Da Vinci Last Supper painting to what they actually showed on stage. So there's That's certainly, if, at the very least, there was a hat tip to the Last Supper. And um, to me, it makes more of a mockery because they're utilizing that with um, the, the Greek god of debauchery 
and then having a whole lot of um, queers and gays and and um, and drag queens portraying all the apostles and Jesus himself. So, I mean, it's just laughable. I mean, these, these people, uh, whether they know what they're doing or not, I don't know. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't offended. Um, I don't I don't get offended very easy, but um, I certainly say that they were disrespecting a lot of people and certainly disrespecting the, the Christian faith. And um, usually disrespect is a choice. And, you know, the old adage, you know, um, you, respect is earned. And myself, if I disrespect someone else, that's on purpose. It's not by accident, whereas offence is a choice by the person receiving it. <clears throat> and And these guys certainly went out of their way to disrespect the Christian faith. There's no doubt in my mind about it, and it's just ridiculous. But I mean, like I said, I, I didn't watch it, um, and I'm not watching the Olympics anyway, so it doesn't really affect me much. But it's just another, another stupid thing that's going on in 2024 that we have to endure. Well, what if they had depicted, you know, um, Muhammad and um, a selection of goats? What would have happened then? <laughs> Hello. Probably what what happened at Bastos Day or something like that with the truck driving down, running over all those people. Yeah, probably something like that. Just this, uh, this time they would be chasing chasing all the um, brightly coloured ones that couldn't run because they're in high heels, whether they're men or, or women. Yeah, there's so many things the French could have celebrated, but they chose to to celebrate debauchery. I mean, I don't get it. Um, at the, at the end at the end of the day, what do you expect from a Muslim country? Well, yeah, pretty much. I mean, it, it clearly showed that France has fallen. Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, the, the the French, you know, they've got rid of the other two colours in their flag just like normal. Just put up the white one. Yep. Yeah. We'll, we'll bring you on. Where I um I saw the the interview with the guy that organised the um, whole thing, the art director or whatever. Where do you mm. call it art, whatever? Um, and he's bragging about how in France they're allowed to do and love whoever they want. They've got so many rights in, in France, and they, they wanted to celebrate inclusivity. Unless, of course, you're Christian, then you can bugger off. But they wanted to they wanted to show a, a united front. Or, it's just all keyword. It, it felt like I was reading the front page of the WEF webpage, you know? Inclusivity, all these catchphrases that they throw out there thinking they mean something. What they don't understand, though, is this mass uh, Islamic immigration that they've, um, you know, particularly in France, is that eventually uh, French will cease to exist and some form of Sharia law will come in and that'll be the end of all of them. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I, I don't know what to say to that because I don't disagree. <laughs> I mean, they've been piling in from down Greek way, uh, Greece way for almost a decade now, you know? Oh, yeah. So they're just opening the borders and that's what they're trying to do over in the United States now as well, so... It's making my yacht look really, really attractive, mate. Off-grid living, that's where it's at. Yeah, you need a cannon on it, though. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll once we get to certain certain countries around the world where you can purchase such a thing, then we may be making an installation on the bow. Uh, <laughs> I'm making two cannons. I could sell you one. Oh, yeah? Yeah? Cool. You'll need somewhere to go as well, mate, so you might, might be begging me for a room. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be a room. It'll be a bunk, won't it? And a cabin. They call yeah, them exactly. on yachts. And you'll be the and you'll be the cabin boy. <laughs> cabin boy and uh, 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 cannon. Cannon boy, yeah. Well, well it, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm building two cannons, one of which is a naval cannon, you know, on a naval uh, uh, mount. So you know, it could be useful, but I'm not sure your boat could handle the recoil. Is it mountable and and quick re- refill? Because we need that. Because I'm not a very good aim. That's all right. I'll, I'm a good aim. Anyway, uh, Marcus, it's good to have you back on on the buddies again, and um, we'll look forward to hearing you again from you again in the future. Cool. Talking about some other madness in twenty twenty four, no doubt. No doubt, there'll be plenty more of it. Good chat, mate. Thanks, mate. See you. Welcome to Cam's buddies, Jack. Good to have you back. Got a camera. That was quick. I'm always must have been on. <laughs> you're, you're, you're old school. You would have sat up and watched the opening ceremony of the Olympics um, on the weekend. Uh, do you want me to lie or do you want me to tell you exactly what I did? <laughs> well, if you didn't watch it, that's all right. I didn't watch it. Well, it was on and my wife was watching it. And I have to admit, I love the French. I love France. Um, 
My civil engineering background makes me shudder at their um, engineering ability when it comes to septic um, sewerage, but uh, that's another matter. But uh, So I started watching this thing, and I started seeing, maybe I'm wrong, but I thought I saw lots of transvestites and people like that, and I thought, ah, oh, it's time I went and did some uh, work for my other job working for ad plan. <laughs> so I got on my iPad and answered aviators queries. Yeah, well... You're right. I haven't, I haven't been of much use to you, I'm afraid. It was full of trannies, and there's been an outrage um, over it. Uh, people are, uh, are concerned that they were mocking, uh, you know, the depiction of uh, Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper and mocking Christianity. Um, you, you obviously caught a bit of a, a sneak preview on that. What, what's your What's your view on that? Do you think it was... Just a bit of stupidness, or is it more deliberate? I don't really know the answer to that <clears throat> until um, I knew that that was going to be a topic, which I only found out about. If I didn't do much research on it, <laughs> and I'd have to think about that. Uh, <clears throat> but I'm old school, old fashioned, and mm. unfortunately, none of all that so called modern stuff um, rings my bell, I'm afraid to say. I'm would, very conservative, as you know. Well, let's put it another way. Would you fly a French aeroplane? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they make the best planes in the world. There's no doubt about that. Is it like their cars where they've, they, they go faster in reverse? Or their tanks? Well, any time you fly Air New Zealand out of here, you're flying on a French aeroplane. So yeah, um, that's, that's like to Australia or the islands. Um, yeah. What about helicopters? No, they, they make wonderful aeroplanes. The A380, which I know is sort of uh, probably too big for most people, it's the most wonderful aeroplane ever. It's brilliant. The ones you've been on, it, there's no other airplane that sort of can compare. Yeah, I've done a few trips on A380s, and I have to say, uh, just an amazing aircraft. Um, but I think part of that was the fact that Emirates was flying it, and their service uh, is absolutely exemplary. But but you're right. The even in in cattle class in an A380, um, it's comfortable and uh, you don't feel at all squashed in. Well, I've never been anywhere else but in cattle class, so I, I concur with that. <laughs> Maybe you need a better job then. <laughs> well, I'm working hard, but it's pretty hard at my uh, time of life. I'm, I, as my daughter. Um, said to me, uh, because I only had a fixed wing aircraft and not a helicopter, I was mm. a loser. So uh, I've resigned myself to the fact that I'm a loser. Yeah, well, you know, kids say stupid things sometimes. How is she going with her um, bed out in the garage? It's been a bit, um, uh, well, no, she's not, she's with a, living with a boyfriend. He just became um, world champion in underwater hockey, a game that I hadn't even heard of until... Um, she met him, and they just won the world championship in Kuala Lumpur and beat uh, Australia. And I don't care what sport it is. Any time we beat Australia, man, I am happy. I'm with you on that. I've never w really worked out water polo. I mean, how do you get all the horses to, to swim like that in the pool? It must be bloody hard. Well, it's, of course, I've never seen it before. And there it was on sort of a live feed, which was terribly done. Malaysians need a bit of tuition on that, but having said that, um, it was very interesting. Man, New Zealand really scored well. I mean, that's the second time my future son-in-law, if it goes that far, uh, has been a world champion, which is very meritorious. Well, he sounds like a, I haven't been a world champion. Sounds like a bang-up sort of a fellow. Maybe you should take him aerobatics and see the measure of the bloke. Well, he's British, so straight away he um, he's mm. in favour with me. Mind you, it's, it's better than being French. I don't know about that. France is probably one of my favourite, if not my favourite, um, country on earth. I love it there. Mm -hmm. I like the way of life, food. I just like the French. I want no complaints from you, then. The trannies. Well, yeah, but you were... Well, no, you were talking about something else. I mean, um, uh, you're talking about an event that was staged by... I don't know, people in France, no doubt, but uh, mm. I wonder if all the French actually thought that was good. The one thing good about it was I think that all the public could see the event rather than being in a stadium where 
only those that paid to go in could see it. Well, it's the wonders of but television, isn't it? I don't know. Oh, exactly, exactly. But anyway, I didn't watch it for very long, as I said, um, because I'm old-fashioned and it didn't appeal to me at all. But others have raved about it. I didn't watch it at all because I can't be bothered. Yeah. Well, I'm probably in your camp, I'm afraid, Cameron. No, well, that's <laughs> We're both good. losers then. No, no. <laughs> well, there's no way I'm a loser, so you can't be a loser either, Jack. <laughs> My daughter said I was. Well, yeah, she can sleep in the garage. Not a problem. Problem solved. <laughs> yeah, retribution. Well, that's Fine. old fashioned, yeah. isn't it? Disrespect it is. Find somewhere else to sleep. Easy fixed. I mean, my standard answer to anyone that misbehaves is that they need a thrashing, but apparently I'm not allowed to say that anymore. Damn it. Well, you're being correct. You can't say that. <laughs> Look, we're going off topic, but um, what re really gets me is the youth today, and I employ enough of them, their work, work ethic is not the same as it used to be. I think that we should have compulsory military training. They need to go through, um, you know, a an army school to teach them how well, to do stuff. Trained. You know, when we were when I caused trouble at school, which was almost every day because school was boring for me, um, I'd get I'd get told by by the you know the teacher go go and find a cane. You know, I, I never managed to find one, um, but you know they they gave me stupid instructions, so they got stupid results, but. Um, if they, if I did find a cane, then they would have given me six of the best and told me to mind my P's and Q's. And when they stopped corporal punishment, I think that's when society started falling down. Oh, absolutely. And um, you're not a bad person. And, and your definition of bad, I would imagine, is nothing compared with what's bad today. For yeah, example, I wasn't it's... bad either, but I still I still got 37 strokes of a cane in the third form at Marlborough College. Oh, I had one. I had one uh, teacher, my economics teacher. His name was Mr. Forder. Um, Paul Forder is now and does some, something in business in economics. He said to me, Slater, if I hear your one voice one more time, I'm, I'm going to cane you. And I said, Sir, if you tried to cane me, I laugh in your face. And that was the end of that discussion. <laughs> I, I well, was I had red raw oh. buttocks for months on end. <laughs> Oh, you must be a slow learner then. <laughs> they, they, they had um, this kind of cane. They, the teachers will go out and get the right type of uh, wood for these canes. Man, they cut you bad. We used to put our cap in our pocket so that the whiplashes, the canes whipped around your buttocks. Um, that's where it will cut the most. And we'd put a cap in there. And if they saw you had a cap in there, they'd make you take it out and give you another stroke. Well, I had a teacher, Bob Hunt, and... and uh, he started off the year the same way for every class. He said, right, all everyone line up outside. You're all going to get a stroke of the cane so you know what it feels like if you don't do your homework. And so, you know, all of Perfect. us bigger boys, we would uh, push all of the little weedy boys to the front of the queue so that, um, you know, the most, you know, he hadn't tired himself uh, quite so much by the, you know, as he was walloping them. And then after he got through about 10 of them, he'd call out, the one at the back gets six. And so we'd be pushing all the little guys yeah. to the back of the line then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a firm believer in corporal punishment. I think yeah. it's the biggest mistake ever to stop it. Well, we wouldn't I have think a lot of these hoodlums of today might be a little bit better behaved if they knew they were going to get a whack. And it was, it's the same in the police. You know, you, we were in fear of policemen. It's not that we didn't like them. We were in fear of, um, first of all, getting a kick up the butt if you did something wrong, like riding your bicycle through a park or something. Yeah. And But the biggest fear was they'd say, I know your name and I'm going to tell your father. And then you get a right hiding after that. Well, my father always said to me, if I ever got the cane at school, I'd get it again when I got home. So he yep. never yep. told me I got yep. the cane. It's really simple. <laughs> yeah. We survived. We digress. <laughs> but thanks for your call, Jack. Dude, how the hell did we di digress into all of that rubbish? Oh, because it's my show and I can do what I want. That's true. Good on you. Excellent. All right, we'll talk again next week, Jack. Nice talking to you. See you, Cam. See ya. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Jimmy. How are you? G'day. Very well this week, mate. I'm full of energy. 
How about you, sir? Yeah, I'm the same. Good to be back in my usual slot, though. Um, it was a bit, bit of a, uh, a bit of a eye opener getting up early in the morning to run the breakfast takeover. But anyway, we we have to do these things sometimes. Now, what are you talking about this week, Mr. Slatter? Did you watch the opening ceremony of the Olympics? And if you did, what did you think? And if you did, <laughs> have you seen about the reaction of that? I didn't watch it. I was going to watch it on record, and then I saw highlights of it, so I proceeded to not watch it because it's just more of the same in the West, the decline, the woke virtual signaling, the stuff we talk about all the time. It's just infested everywhere. Why on earth would they do that to the opening of the Olympics? Why? Well, I think they just wanted it to put it in Christian eyes, I think. I know, two, two billion people, right? It just, you know, the, the Olympics are supposed to be about lifting up and success and celebrating and see this, the, they're trying to bring people down. It's in virtual signal to a real small amount of people. It's just, it's just more madness. The, the, the longer the timeline goes, the more craziness we see all the time, everywhere. It's insane. It's so, so many things that the French have got to be proud of. You know, they could have celebrated... I don't know, some of their inventors. Uh, they could have celebrated some of their famous artists. They could have celebrated Scientists. some of their famous architects, uh, you know, some of the famous people in history like Rollo, um, the Duke of Normandy, for example, or, or even um, William the Bastard, uh, who was William the Conqueror, who went on to conquer the, the British crown. They could have put all of those sorts of things, but, oh, no, they had to do, uh, you know, a Lovey's version, trans version of... Um, of the Last Supper with a big fat tranny <laughs> as Jesus. Well, maybe they're trying to celebrate their food a little bit. I don't know. It was, it's just all very bizarre. But they've seen it like a 26% drop in viewership in the Olympics. So, as you know, go work, go broke. It's happening. Yeah, it's happening. So, Good. Let it happen, I guess. When are we going to see a kickback? When are we going to see someone come out and just not do that? Well, what that are, is a big yeah. public event. What I really want to see is if we're going to have all these freaks like blokes who think they're Sheila's, um, you know, in the boxing or, or weightlifting or whatever, why don't we just have a freak Olympics where you can take whatever drugs you want, you can, you know, wear whatever suit or clothes that you want, you can pretend whoever you want to be, but you're only going to fight or, or compete against other similarly, you know, weirdo people. But, you know, I want to see somebody, some some bloke probably, run 100 metres in two and a half seconds, you know, juiced up to the max. <laughs> He'll probably die at the finishing line, but I want to see it, you know, uh, instead of this. Yeah, or well, someone lift 500 kilos. Yeah. Or, you know, so. then, yeah, that would be awesome. We've been, I've been talking about that for years with people, just an open, unlimited um non-drug-tested Olympic, dope Olympics. Yeah. I'm surprised a private company in the US hasn't gone with it and, and, you know, run it on a small scale, you know, just had a few few events. Because imagine just have a female and male category just open. There's no other weight kilos. Just go for it. Imagine it. Make people work very wealthy. Mm. Because the viewership would be there. But maybe you should start at New Zealand. You should start at Cam. You've got a website. Oh, well, maybe Dana White should do it. I mean, or, or the guys from, you know, the WWE or F or whatever it's called now, the wrestling, you know, all of those guys are completely juiced freaks. You know, all, all the ones that we, that we looked at when, when we were kids, they're all dead now. You know, none of them lasted past 40. Um, but, you know, it was a spectacle. It was it was uh, entertaining. And, and I think if we had an Olympics that was with all these juiced athletes, um, and we could see all these spectacular feats happening. We were sitting there going, wow, that's just incredible. Th it would make more money than the Olympics itself, I, don't, I think. Oh, 100% would, because you could easily commercialise it, and you wouldn't have to have such fair rules and testing and just be... It, it, and also, it would get rid of the... the, the, the by, birth, by birth, you inherit some sort of um, genetic freak talent like Usain Bolt had. You know, whereas some average Joe can just train and juice himself to become like that. Mm. So you get a much wider spread of people entering. You know, it's not going to limit. I suppose it's pretty expensive, to be fair. At the end of his natural. Right? Yeah. 
right, with his natural DNA genetic, you know, um, benefits. And then he decides that in the, in the twilight of his career for certain events, he's going to juice himself. And then he'll be super Usain Bolt, who will be just smoking everybody because not only has he got genetic benefits, now he's juiced as well. <laughs> I mean, it would be incredible. You sound like Rory Whitey, people with genetic benefits, Cam. Yeah, he, he, looks like, he, he looks like his um, DNA was uh, reefed out of the cooking pot from the bottom. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the, well, I guess that's what um, we've got to avoid talking about. But um, <laughs> So, I think much of the opening ceremony and it's all go woke, go broke for you, and that's all she wrote. Yeah, well, I, to be honest, I haven't watched any Olympics since then. Um, because I'm just not interested in it anymore. I just can't be bothered with it. And it's such a shame for all those young athletes who trained like that. But I know a lot of people have gone right off it now. I've got some Catholic friends who are boycotting it. So they're just going to read what they say. Did you see the two blokes who um, thought that they were Sheila's in the box and got a height from the girls? Yeah. Oh, did they? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, they're even more pathetic. I was sitting here thinking, hang on, you guys um, were pathetic boxers as males, so you decided to become, you know, females. Um, your stuff had the headline, female boxers, you know, okay to 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 um, compete, and and they both got a hiding from actual females, which I thought was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> yeah, well, that happened to female of the year in 2020, Laurel Hubbard. She got it up. Got his ass kicked in the female weightlifting category at Tokyo, didn't she? Yeah. So they're not they're not just losers losers in the male category. They're just losers in sport, and they're trying to cheat their way into attention seeking situations. And it's good to see them losing. It's good to see the females prosper over them. It's awesome. Yeah. Exactly. In fact, I might have to go and watch some of that boxing. <laughs> they look for the replays of the blokes <laughs> hiding from the Sheilas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Cam, that's awesome. All right. Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks for calling Cam's buddies. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Hey, bye. It's always amazing to see what the person on the street thinks, and today was no different. Now, as a Christian, I was not offended, but I can understand how many might be. But here's the thing. There haven't been any riots in the street, cars set on fire, or random beheadings of people involved, have there? I guess that just goes to show that while Christians may be mad, they are at least tolerant. Tell us your thoughts on Cam's Buddies by emailing inbox at realitycheck.radio or text to 2057. Thanks for tuning in to RCR, Reality Check Radio. Do you like what you're listening to or dislike what you're listening to? Either way, we want to hear from you. Get in touch with us now. You can text us with your message to 2057. That's 2057. Or email us at inbox at realitycheck.radio. We'd love to hear from you. So connect with us today.